In this session, we're going to take a look at making our own artistic media brushes or brush strokes for Corel Draw. In this session, I'm going to make a distress or grunge splat type of brush. And then we're going to make an effect to go with that, a halftone effect in the background. And you can see we've got two sports designs here. Both of them are Wildcats lacrosse. Now, in this design, I've added my custom stroke with the halftone effect. And this design doesn't have any effect on it. You can see the difference between the two designs. Very easy to set these things up. And really, they do give us an advantage when it relates to competing with our local competitors because we can see that this design with this element built into the background just has a better look than what I'd call maybe a flat design like you have over here on the left. And really, when you think about designing t-shirts, there's really a couple of elements that you're working with, typically text, your art elements or your clip art, and then you have textures and effects or elements. And the elements go in the background. And they add that touch to the design that really makes the t-shirt look better. And this is where you want to get into, as I've often said, working the little things that give you the advantage so that you're standing better looking out, out of your shop into the local market, which is also marketing because everything that goes out of your shop really is marketing for your business. And having these nice designs as opposed to these flat designs can make a big difference in the success of your business. Also, the t-shirts just look nicer and people are, you know, they have a lot of pride in what they wear, so they like to put something on nice. So to get started here, first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and build out my brush. And I'll do that by getting my pick tool, and then I'm going to come over here to the launcher or the rocket launcher from Corel, and I'll go ahead and open Corel Photo Paint. And I'll start working on a custom brush in Photo Paint. Very easy to do. I'm going to go with a new blank document. I'll have this set at 300 dpi, 7 by 5 is fine, I'll select OK. Go ahead and maximize this. Be working off the background. I'm going to come over here to my paintbrush tool. Now you can make all kinds of brushes once you understand how this technique works. Down here in my brushes, if you come down, there's a brush number 47, which is ideal. And I'll scroll down here until I get to that for this type of effect. And that's the brush I've already got selected right here 47 right here but I just wanted to show you where that was now this is kind of like a charcoal nib now once I've got my brush selected I can go up here to size and I could left click and move my mouse up and down and change the size of the brush and you can see that there or I could enter a numerical value 250 hit enter and that would change the size of my brush or I can hold down shift on my keyboard push my mouse forward and that'll make my brush bigger. If I pull my mouse back, that'll make my brush smaller. So I'll go with a nib size right about there, and I'll just dab. And that's all I'm going to do. And you'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute. Make one a little bit bigger, and I'll dab that, say, just over here. Make one a little bit smaller, pulling back, holding down Shift, and just dab in here. And I'll dab there also. And I'll make it a little bit smaller, holding down Shift, pulling back dab in here put a dab over there and say a dab off here we want to give these like a splat shape you know just so they're not like regular shapes i'll take my mouse hold down shift pull back make it even smaller and just kind of do some dabbing around here to give these kind of like a splat shape and i can put some splats off to one side here and we'll come up into here and we'll follow this up into like a point Kind of like my brush is a start and end like a point. Seems more like a natural stroke to me. I'll go ahead and make this even smaller and put some additional dabs around in different places and really just change these shapes here so they don't all look round but they look more like splat shapes or grunge shapes. And I could do a lot more work on this but for the sake of the tutorial I'll just move right along here. And then you could go and experiment with this and set these up. And I'll go ahead and make a bigger one right over here. Do the same thing down here and then down there. And then one over here and then we'll go with a smaller one. And then I'll just dab that in there. And then if I wanted to get something really small and put a lot of little dabs in different places around in here. And just kind of scatter them around. Now if I want to do some editing to this I can do that also. I can come over here and get my eraser tool. And we've got that set at 48. Let's say I didn't like this here. I can just erase that out and make an adjustment down here and maybe cut that off like that. Now I can do some more with this, but for the sake of the tutorial, we'll go ahead and wrap here. 
as far as the stroke creation is concerned. Then I'll just come over here to my object docker and you can get to that through window, dockers, and over here to objects if it's not available. If it's closed, you can just click on it and it'll open up. I'll just go over here and I'll select copy. With that selected, minimize that. I'll go ahead to Corel Draw and I'll just go ahead and paste that in. Now there's my brush stroke. The next thing I'm going to do is convert this to vector and do some work on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just convert this to a black and white. So I'm going to go to bitmaps mode, and this is currently an RGB, so I'll go to the grayscale. Then I'll go bitmap mode, and here I'll go to black and white. Now I don't want to use halftone, I'm going to set this to line art. And we'll zoom out here, and all I do is with my hand tool here, pan tool, I just left click and right click, and that'll zoom in and zoom out in that panel. Now you can see I'm not picking up a lot of the distress. Now I could work with this if I wanted a really light distress effect or brush, but I can left click the threshold, bring that up, and that'll bring that up. And we'll go right about there and I'll select OK. Next thing I'll do is I'll go to bitmaps, mode again, and I'll go back to grayscale. You can see how this is a little choppy here, so I'm going to go to bitmap, blur, and Gaussian blur, and we'll click a preview, and that's just going to smooth that out a little bit and select OK. And then I'm going to go bitmap, mode, black and white again, go to line art, and I can bring some of that detail back right there as you can see, select OK. Now with this setup, the next thing I'm going to do is just simply go to bitmaps and convert this, outline, and I'll just go with clip art. It's going to want to reduce that, and I'm just going to vector trace this. We'll let that process and I can see what I've got there. I'm going to bring my detail up so that I get more detail. And you can see some of that white there. And I want that. I'll probably bring my detail up all the way so that I get everything. I can smooth that out a little bit. And I'll go ahead and select OK. And that'll process my vector trace. And I'll have a vector splat type grunge brush here in Corel Draw. And this is my original bitmap. I won't need that anymore. And go ahead and select this got 6,000 plus objects and I know what happened. If you go to view wireframe here. We can see that Corel made all these little objects here because I ran that blur. So there was pixels there. So I'm going to go ahead and ungroup all. And then here I'm just going to go ahead and lasso these and select them. Left click, hold down, move across, delete. We'll get rid of all of these little objects here because we don't want to have all of those. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of this background here. We won't need that. We'll go back to View and Enhanced. Go ahead and select everything here. i got 68 objects. Now I know there's going to be some white in here. To get my white out, I'll just use Simple Steps for that. I know that we use Simple Steps for color separation, but I also use it for object selection a lot. And I'll go ahead and bring this over here, and I'll go to Color Management, Create Palette, White here. I'm going to go to my select objects, I'll go to both fills and outline, select all objects. I got 26 objects. Come down here where my X is and I'll just move these over here and delete these. Now that being the case, I can take objects from my splats and add them and tweak them in vector as you can see here and just really you know make some adjustments if I want to. Take something like this, make it a little bit bigger, rotate it, move it, etc. and really tweak out what's going on with the splat brush stroke that I've created here. Make this smaller and move it around. Just do a lot of different tweaking around in it if you really want to tweak in your splats. Now at this point what I'll do is I'll take this brush, everything that's selected, or actually these vector objects, I'll just come up here and click on combine. Now I've got one curve. And then I'm going to take this and just go ahead and rotate this till it's horizontal because you don't want to do your brushes as a vector. And you know, even if I wanted to do something like, you know, make this longer, I could do that. Left click this and then bring all this in this way. And then that's a different look there. And then you might want to mirror that just so it doesn't look like it's been mirrored, as you can see there. Move this in a little bit more and get a really different look with that. Go ahead and select this. And then I'm going to go to my artistic media docker down here. And all I need to do is take this left click, hold down, and put it into that docker. Now if you don't have that, you can go to Window, Dockers, and select your Artistic Media Docker and open that up. And then just grab your brush, left click, and then drag this in here. I'm going to go as a brush, and I'll just call this Grunge Splat. 
for my brush name, Artistic Media Brush, and then go ahead and save that. Now I won't need this anymore because I've created that, so I can go ahead and delete that. And if I come down here, I can see down in here my brushes. Now here from this area, I can go to my menu, and I can turn off my presets, and I can turn off my object spray, so I'm just going to have my brush strokes. And then if I come down here, I'll find that brush down here at the bottom. I go with my Artistic Media tool, with this brush selected, left click, hold down, drag that, and shape that, and you can see the effect I get. Now this is going with a brush that I've got up here. So I'll come down here, and I'll see if I can find that splat in here, and it's not available there. So I'll go ahead and just click on there. Somehow that got confused that way. Now it's set in both places by clicking on it with the brush stroke selected. So up here in the properties bar, I've got that stroke, and I've also got that set down here. And then I can left click and create my strokes or my Distress Black Grunge effects. Now the nice thing about this is it's not like static clip art. In other words, it's not something that I don't have any control over. So then I can come to say something like my design here, just left click and then create a shape, and then bring this shape down in here to the bottom, like you see right there, and then that's going to be set up in my design as a Distress Splat effect that I'm going to put in the background as a design element. If I want to tweak this, I can double click on this, and you can see the notes here. I can click on that and grab that control arm, smooth that out. There's a node there. I could delete that and smooth that out. As you can see, the one thing you want to be aware of in the brushes, and really, we've got all the training for that here on advancedtshirts.com, which is our Secrets of Brushes training series. And here we've got some different projects we did with brushes, and we've got some brush products available on the site. But you really want to go through these ones down here at the bottom where I go over all the ins and outs of working with brushes and why. I would have to say that, you know, working design brushes were one of the biggest things that I encountered as far as t-shirts are concerned because I can shape the graphics and the elements and design pieces to the actual design of the shirt. And, you know, if you're dealing with a brush and you do something like this, you're going to get this effect that's up here. And you want to realize that really what you're working with is these nodes and lines and you want to be able to edit these. If you want to edit these, all you can do is just take your pick tool, double click on this, and you'll see the line that you get, which is your vector objects. You can go through and clean these up and really smooth these brushes out and do a lot of things with them to clean them up. And once again, all of that's covered in the training series on advancedtshirts.com and it's a free training series. Go ahead and delete that and I'll delete this. I just want to cover a few things there. Then we'll come back here with this setup. Here, I can take this. If I want to make this thinner, I could make the stroke thinner or wider up here and I'll go down to about say 1.28 right there. Now I probably would have done some more work on this brush but we'll go ahead and work with this the way it is just for the sake of the tutorial. I'll go ahead and take this and duplicate this and then I'm going to hold down control and just move to the left to mirror that because you don't have a mirror function when these are selected or I could have just broken it apart. I'm going to go ahead and right click here break artistic media group apart. You'll see a line here you can just select that and delete that and that'll get rid of that. Do the same thing over here, right click, break artistic media group apart, click off, I'll click on to this line, delete that, and then I'll bring this over here so it's kind of centered with what's going on there. I'll select both of these, then I'll go ahead and I'll just weld these together. I'm going to right click, order, in front of, and I'll click on my t-shirt here, and there's my effect built into the background. The next thing I'll do to build out my halftone effect is I'll just go ahead and take this object, and I'm going to come over here to the interactive tools, I'm going to come down to the drop shadow with that selected. Left click there and create drop shadow. I'll change this to say 100. And I'll bring this in in size to like about 11 or something like that. And I might bring this down to say something like 82 there. And then I'm just going to right click here on the drop shadow, break drop shadow apart. I'm going to go bitmap, convert to bitmap, I'm going to select grayscale, 150 dpi. This is kind of big, so I could go smaller because we're going to do some stuff with this anyway. I'll go with 100, select OK. Then I'm going to go bitmaps and I'm going to come down to color transform and I'm going to select halftone. And we'll go ahead and preview that. And you can see that effect. Now that dot's real small. And if I go up here in dot radius, we can get some bigger halftone dots. And I could change the angle of this and see what I get for different looks and select OK. Now that select, I'm going to go to bitmap mode and I'm going to select black and white again. 
This time it won't matter what you select, but I'll select OK. I'll left click, and the reason I made that to a monochrome is so that I can change the color of it. So I can left click to make the background transparent. When you work with, mono, with monochrome, it's the opposite of vector. So it's a left click for the background, right click for the foreground. I can make that foreground white. And you can see that effect built, built in there. And then I could come in here and say change this to the color of blue. That's the same color as the text that I've got in my design. And I got the wrong objects. Controls need to deselect that. And there's my brush design set up with my effect. So quick tutorial on how to make your own distress and splat brushes and build out some design effects and dress up your designs working in Corel's RAW to get those elements built in the background of your designs that really make all the difference. When you compare something like this against, say, a flat design, I'll go ahead and delete these here. You can really see a big difference in the quality of design. It's just a little thing that you can do in a few minutes. Once you get this down, you're going to design at a higher level and put better graphics out into your local market. So go ahead and wrap here, and we'll see you in our next video.